you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Thank you. So I have 15 minutes of your time today. In order to get that 15 minutes out, I need to start with a little exercise. Are you willing? Are you willing to do it with absolute silence? Good. I hoped you'd say that. Before, before I can teach you how to captivate any audience, in the short time I have, this is normally a full day workshop, I need to get your brains in the right state of mind. Are you ready? Now, some of you have seen this before. If you have, I ask you to think back to the first time you saw this. Here it is. I'm going to put some words up on the screen. I'd like you to read to yourself, to yourself in silence. When you're done reading that, look back up at me. Ready? Go. We're not trying to read to figure out what this means, because it really doesn't have a meaning. It's just read the words. Anybody need more time? I'm going to move on because I can't see you anyway. All right. So now what I'm going to do is put the words back up here, and I'm going to ask all of you in silence to count to yourself how many of these you see. Okay? There's no trick. I'm going to put the same words back up here. Count how many Fs you see. When you have that number, please stand up. Okay? Now, don't make up any rules here. There is no partial letters. I'm not looking for an F inside an E. Okay? The letter can be anywhere. I'm not looking for black text on a black background or white text on a white background. Ready? Go. It shouldn't take long. As soon as you see the number, stand up. Come on. I know I'm putting the rest of the people who are still sitting a little hard to see, but just stand up. Shh. Okay, everybody has it? Now, this will be a nightmare for the videographers and the people at home, and I apologize for that. I'm going to take these words away. Now, watch what happens around the room. All of those of you who saw one, two, or three, one, two, or three, could you sit down now, please? Go ahead. Looks like about 60% of you sat down. Now, weren't we all looking at the same thing? How about four? Could you sit down now? A few more? Something's going on here, right? Five? A few people standing at six? Everyone should be sitting now. Shh. I'll put it back up here real quick. I don't have a lot of time to let you find the rest of them, but they were all staring you right in the face. I'll save you some time. What about the two-letter words? Oh. Okay, so the point of this exercise is really this. In the next 11 minutes that I have with you, I'm not going to say anything new. It's all been said before. As it relates to communication skills and presentation skills, it's all been said before. It's all in the books. It's all on videos. It's everywhere. But what I've done here is combined together for you a set of tools in a red box that you'll be able to use after today. And hopefully, I'm going to show you something that's staring you right in the face right now that you don't see. And at the end of this talk, hopefully, you have at least one more F as it relates to your ability to present or communicate. So here we go. Before you go to present to anyone, it's all about the audience, right? You have to know who the audience is. And with today's ability to get on the internet and find out who, what, when, where, and why of the people you're meeting with, there is no excuse to not have information about your audience. I'll assume you can figure that one out. But now you've got your audience, so how do you stand out? In today's day and age, whether you're an entrepreneur, an intrapreneur, or a business person, or a president of the PTA, you need to be able to stand out of a crowd. This is a very crowded market. I travel all over the world working with people just like you. There are rooms filled with people just like you all over the world trying to get the attention of investors, strategic partners, customers. How do you stand out? Well, if you're doing a yoga franchise, you might want to actually stand on your hands when you're presenting. But other than that, I'm going to hand you now nine tools that you can use in what some people have actually nicknamed the red method or the red box method. And what it is, is nine tools that you'll be able to use after this talk for the rest of your lives in many different ways. I just can't show you how today. There they are, right at the bottom. 
VP plus same, you all know the word same, you'll never forget that again as long as you live. I'm going to put new meaning around this, squared. I have one minute for each tool. Here's the first one. Anybody know? Value proposition, right? This is something we all take for granted, that we all have a value proposition that we can use effectively. Well, guess what? They're not that effective but I can point you in a direction that can help you get more effective about creating your value propositions. Again, whether you're the president of the PTA or whether you're an entrepreneur. You know this man, Steve Blank? Steve Blank, the grandfather of a lean startup, if you haven't watched him or seen him yet, you need to search him out because he came up with a magnificent one-line formula for a value proposition. And there's probably seven or eight out there you can use. He says, we help X do Y by doing Z. You break it down, the X is who, the Y is what you do, and the Z is how. And you don't have to use the whole thing. You could stop at the Y. Here's an example. We help startups start up faster. You could stop right there. Or you can give how by providing entrepreneurs with unparalleled access to resources. That's just an example. It's not the only way to do it, but it's an example. You may think this is easy to put together, but it's tough work. Okay, moving right along. You need to know about this value matrix. A value matrix can help you really get a handle on all the different values that you provide to who and what, and then the different values. Create a matrix. It'll help you zero in on really where you're unique and different. I wish I had time to tell you all about how to do these things. If you want to know more about how to do these things, the Coffin Founder School is a resource for you. It's free. It's so free, you don't even have to sign up or give them your email. That's how free it is. And if you want more on Steve, there's a whole series of really well done videos that were done at his home right there for you to watch for free. Any one of you want to know about Lean Startup, that's a great place to start. Here's the link to that website, and I'll give it to you again at the end. All right. So tool number two, three, four, and five are all related, so that's all based on the word same. Let's start with the first one. Number two, how many of you here have ever been on that airplane that goes up and you feel weightlessness? No one? So how do you know what it feels like when you're at that point with weightlessness? You don't. So you have to ask somebody what it feels like, right? One time I met somebody and he told me what it feels like. It's not anything like I thought. You actually feel queasy. Often you will vomit. That's why they call it the vomit comet. And it's a very unusual feeling because you're like weightless and you can't go anywhere. You can't move. You can't do anything. So totally unlike what I thought. But what, was, what, what he had to do to tell people what it was like is he had to use the old standby simile. And that's what the S stands for. You need to use more similes in the way you tell people what you do, why you do it, and why they should care. It's very simple. A is like B. Didn't know you were coming to a grammar lesson today, did you? All right, the second letter, the, the, the next, uh, before we go on to the next one. So here's a value proposition combined with the simile. And that's how you can add color to your value propositions. We help people just like you get prepared for high stakes presentations by rehearsing like it's a Broadway show. What does that sound like? Okay, so tool number three. This is a cool story, very, very quick. I asked this gentleman, what do you do? He says, Nathan, I do for surfing what the chairlift does for snow skiers. Really? That's pretty cool. Well, you know, the problem with snow skiing is getting to the top of the mountain, and the chairlift fixes that problem. Well, the problem with getting out to the waves is you have to do this, and that's 95% of, of surfing. So he created an electric surfboard with a little wireless controller that goes on your thumb. You need some motor, you press the button. It takes you out to the wave you want to surf, or it puts you ahead of the wave you want to surf. He could have said, we make electric surfboards. That wasn't too exciting. And when you all try to tell people literally what you do, you're boring people. <laughs> try coming up with an analogy. That's what the A stands for. A good analogy will get people interested. It'll get them curious. And in the, what I call the handshake intro, you know, what do you say in your first or second sentence to somebody? You can't spend 30 seconds or your elevator pitch. It's got to be one or two sentences. Speaking of which, here's one of the best one sentences that came from the IBM Smart Camp. They go around the world. They try to find the best companies who are going to save the planet. One of the guys gets up on stage and says, Ladies and gentlemen, I am so thrilled to be here to share with you our machine that turns water into money. And that's the reaction he got from about 400 investors in the room. 
He literally makes a machine about so big with turbines underneath those yellow housings, you throw it into a rushing waterway, you plug it in, and you get free electricity. So does he make turn water into a money? Yes, yeah, some of you are shaking your head. Of course not. That's just crazy. So he's using a very powerful technique, a metaphor. Metaphors are powerful, powerful tools. Moving right along. Now we're on to the E. And all of you do this when people don't understand what the heck you're trying to tell them. You go to an example, which is great. Use your examples. Keep going on your examples. But frankly, an example might not be general enough to hit your whole audience. So do this. Take your examples and add a simile or an analogy or a metaphor during the discussion of your example, and it will take new life. That's the first five. But before we leave them, be very careful. Similes, analogies, and metaphors can be culturally sensitive. If I just talk to you right now and you compare two things to me, and I said to you, you know what, that's like chalk and cheese. How many of you know what that means? Few of you raise your hand, but 98% of you have no idea what that means. And that's because it's an Irish saying. It means it's like oil and water. They don't mix. But if you blindly go through life saying, whoa, that's like chalk and cheese, and people don't react, you may know why. You have to test them. Test your similes, analogies, and your metaphors. Whoops, I hit the wrong button there. Let's go back. There we go. To conclude the two, three, four, and five, I want to leave you with one little story. In 1963, John F. Kennedy, president of the U.S., was traveling around, and he went to NASA. He stopped the tour, and he went over to the janitor. And he said, sir, what do you do here at NASA? And the man looked up at me and said, Mr. President, I helped put a man on the moon. He didn't say he collected the garbage, that he sweeps the floor, and that he's a janitor, which is what all of you are trying to do when you're telling people what you're doing. Think bigger. You have something bigger to express. It's a matter of getting there. So that's value proposition, simile analogies, metaphors, and examples. And my clock is running out, but I think I have two extra minutes, if you don't mind. Let me finish up real quickly here. So six, seven, eight, and nine. Told you it was going to go quick. Number six, this one is one of those where you're going to go, oh, I've heard enough about this, I've heard enough about this, and that is stories. You heard lots of stories here today, and you're going to hear more. Stories are the way to engage with your audience. If you ever see a TED presenter stand up there, they don't even start by saying, I'd like to tell you a story. They just tell you the story. Stories are magnificent tools because they help you relate to your audience instantly. They help people remember your stories, and most importantly, I think people retell your stories. You want to know more about storytelling? The Kauffman Foundation has done a whole series on Craig Wortman, one of the best storytelling books I've read. You can get that at, at the Kauffman Foundation. He talks about a story matrix as a wonderful tool that you can use to organize all your stories. So he's, got, he's there. Uh, just a couple of guidelines, and one is Everyone decides typically whether they're going to listen or not in the first 10 to 20 seconds of your story. Those are the most important parts of your story. Secondly, there's a beginning, middle, and end to most stories, right? But you don't have to tell the beginning, middle, and end to every story like my sister does. A lot of those details are just not relevant, so leave it off. Just get to the main point. If you have to start with the end, start with the end. Or mix it up. And don't tell the whole movie. When you're telling your stories, especially when you have short time frames, make it about the movie trailer, not the movie itself. Just tell enough so people want to know more. A, tool number seven. This is one of my favorite ones. When you meet people in the hallway and say, so what do you do? Well, I'm the CEO. I'm a VP of marketing. I'm a UI designer. So what? Who cares? Why don't you add some color to it? Why don't you add something to it that will help people get more interested in listening to more of what you are? Like an adjective. Sure, you didn't know you were coming to a grammar lesson. Did I say that earlier today? That helps you describe you a little bit. So now when you're answering the question, I am a what? I am a black belt pitch coach. I could tell people I'm a pitch coach. In a room like this, you all know what that means. When I say I'm a black belt pitch coach, which came from someone else, I didn't make that up myself. The one of the best ones I heard was, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur with the soul of a dancer. <laughs> what do you think they made? Dancing clothes for 
you get it. Okay. So work on how you answer that question. This is one of my most favorite. Okay. So you know how very often you're working with a, a group, whether it's one on two, three, four, or 800 like we have right here, and you're making a point about how let us take care of the details. You don't have to worry about the details. And you want to make an impression on that audience like never before. That's where this M comes in. This one you have to do with me, all right? Take your left hand out, point it with your palm faced up. Go on and do that right now, sitting where you are. And if you're at home, go ahead and take your left hand, the other left, and put the hand palm facing up. I'm sorry, palm facing down. Reach around like this, grab your hands so you're twisted up. Okay? That's right, that's right. Okay, now watch quickly, watch carefully. On the count of three, I want everyone to do exactly as I do. One, two, three. Well, what's the problem? Come on. One, two, three. Okay, well, the reason you're all twisted up is because our software will take care of all the details while you go do your business. And that's a little bit of magic. A little bit of magic that happened right in your hands. I could show you how that's done later, and there's 12 people from the Coffin Foundation here to help us explain how that was done. Finally, number nine, the overall number nine tool that you all have when you're presenting and communicating, but you tend to leave it at home or in the trunk of the car is like watching beautiful swans out in the lake. And they're all just going around and going around and going around. All of a sudden, something comes in, and they get very enthusiastic. And it's a beautiful scene, actually, isn't it? When they get going. Well, I want all of you in the future, when you go to present, think about bringing your enthusiasm to the stage. Bring your enthusiasm out, because that's what people love. And without it, you sound like everybody else. There they are, nine tools all at once, value proposition, simile, analogy, metaphor, examples, stories, adjectives, magic, and enthusiasm. Again, the shout out to the Kauffman Foundation. There's more presentations on presentations there. There's the link. And I want to say a massive thank you to the, one of the best conferences I have ever presented at. Thank you.